All right, guys, got some interesting news that sort of pertains directly to you and Sagar and breaking points because yeah. <laughs> you guys went through something that was almost exactly like this back in the day. Um, some sort of. Yeah, so. Those flavors. So Katie Halper, who's uh, a friend of ours and, mm -hmm. you know, lefty commentator, does, does her own stuff all the time, does some great stuff. Um, she was, uh, I guess, semi-regularly filling in as a host over on Rising on the Hill. Yeah. Of course, the show Rising is birthed by the one and only Crystal Ball and Sagar and Jetty, and they were over at the hill. And, um, well, what happened- You're wearing the Breaking Point shirt, too. You like that, huh? <laughs> what, what happened was was interesting to Katie. I'll, I'll throw it over to you now and let yeah. you explain everything that went on. Basically, she was censored in an egregious way on an egregious topic, but go yeah. ahead and explain. Well, and I think it's worth saying um, for uh, context that uh, the hill is actually has a completely different owner now, Next Our Media, than it had uh, when Sagar and I were there. Right. So like, yeah. you know, our experience in Katie's experience, we did, we never had an issue where they just blanket told us you can't cover this topic. They were never so blatant. Um, there was a lot of like angst when we would, you know, talking about private equity, I remember Pharma, we would get pushed Pharma. back. Pharma was another one. So there were definitely areas where after we would do the topic, they would express displeasure, but we were never blanket banned from covering a topic. Katie wrote a monologue while, you know, when she was filling in about the fact that um, Rashida Tlaib had said at an event that you can't be a progressive and not acknowledge, uh, I don't want to like, I don't remember exact words, but it's basically acknowledge that Israel is an apartheid state. And so there was a huge blow up over these comments and Debbie Wasserman Schultz came out and Jerry Nadler came out and all of this was a whole thing. So Katie, because this is a really core issue for her, um, she is herself Jewish and cares deeply about uh, Palestinian human rights and is extraordinarily, extraordinarily well-versed on the topic as well. She wrote her radar on the topic. Uh, she does her hosting gig, she delivers the monologue, she and I think Robbie go back and forth on it, everything seems fine. And then they told her, we're not gonna post it. And um, she said, well, she she pushed them, you know, can, tried to talk them into posting it. We really need to, you know, be able to air this viewpoint on the channel. No, totally shut down. She asked if they could um, do a different segment and just talk about the topic and maybe even have, you know, someone else on who could debate with her. She's fine with that. No. And not only that, but her future appearance that was already scheduled for her to come on uh, the Hills Rising program was also rescinded and canceled. So in other words, they so, censored her and then fired her because she criticized Israel. blacklisted her. And by the way, yes. that that um, that notion that Israel is an apartheid state is one that is backed up by the top human rights group in Israel. Yes. But, uh, yes. And she <laughs> cites that. I mean, so she has since... Um, she actually published the monologue through another independent news outlet, Breakthrough News, that you can go check out. And I think she's going to put it up on her channel, Katie Halper, uh, on YouTube as well. It's very well grounded. I mean, she talks about, I think, Amnesty International. She talks about current and former Israeli politicians and what they said on the topic. She talks about the specific laws that, you know, lead to this interpretation that, yes, this is, in fact, an apartheid state. Um, she talks about uh, the Israeli human rights organization that you're referring to. So this wasn't some, like, baseless, crazy claim she made up. This was very well grounded in established organizations. And The Hill is basically saying, we can't have the view of like Amnesty International on this channel. So you can't say it, it's completely censored and we don't want you back. It's pretty wild and I mean, it's, we've seen this of course, numerous times when it comes to advocating for Palestinian human rights. Obviously, Rashida Tlaib experienced a, a form of that in the pushback she got to her comments. I think of Nathan Robinson, remember when he got um, fired from, from the, the Guardian, Guardian yeah. for making, mm -hmm. I don't know, some like, like very mild joke on Twitter. Um, but you see, I don't know that there is any topic where you are more likely to be censored than actually standing up for Palestinian human rights. And look, it is, it's corporate media versus independent media. That That's that's the, the dividing line here because the difference is The Hill is a giant corporation that takes a lot of money from advertisers. You guys over on Breaking Points 
are in large part funded by your audience yep. and the stuff that's not funded by the audience is just totally regular ad length. money yeah regular ad money that comes through a buffer where you have no conversation with any of the ad people that's exactly how how my show works too is that i have my patreon people donate two bucks a month five bucks a month seven bucks a month whatever it is and then all the other ad money i get comes through a buffer of adsense where i've never had a conversation with an advertiser my entire time so i'm totally independent you're totally independent people could agree or disagree with us that's totally fine but there is no influence of outsider money when you talk about corporate media virtually across the board there is a more direct connection with the advertisers yeah. where they get skittish on certain topics they're like you can't say this don't say that that crosses a line even things that are fucking obvious that they don't like and this is like this is her being censored for political correctness that's what this is mm -hmm. it's politically incorrect yes. to say the truth about israel so you have to shut up about israel well here's the thing with the hill they found that um there was a market for being anti-censorship they found there was a market for being like anti-establishment and they're happy to cash in on that market until it touches an issue where yeah, they're not no. comfortable they're and cosplay. so then you find out oh you you weren't serious about no. you just thought there was money to be made in posturing like you're anti-censorship but when it comes down to it on an issue where you're uncomfortable you'll censor and blacklist just like all the rest so they are very i mean this is, is not a surprise for me <laughs> but uh yeah you, you know, know better than anybody a very revealing like mask off moment ultimately you know, the business models are what they are. The realities of those business are they are what they are. These this is the core reason Sagar and I ultimately left because you just know that there is gonna come a time where you're gonna face this exact issue. And, you know, I Katie obviously wasn't willing to compromise her principles on an issue that is really core to her. I and I absolutely applaud her for that. That was the the right decision. And and not without some cause for her. And not only was she hosting there and filling in there and she we had her regularly on the show back when i was doing rising she was a weekly contributor and she was also piloting a show with them working workshopping a new show as well so um you know it's it took some courage to be able to come forward and sever that relationship but it it had to be done and it's going to hurt her financially so everybody support katie i think she probably has a patreon, she has a patreon. Or something. Everybody she definitely deserves your support she does support great katie. work on this issue and many others and, as and well. look they are the Hill is cosplaying as independent media. They're not independent media. They are cosplaying as independent media. Like you said, they found the lane of like, what if we did anti-censorship stuff and anti-establishment stuff from within the establishment? And also we censor our own people. Yeah. That was basically what they did. It's, and it's disgusting. Sucks. It's gross. And yeah, but you know, now you have some actual independent media out there. Agree or disagree with them. There's plenty of stuff in independent media I don't agree with. I mm -hmm. think independent media suffers a lot, oftentimes from audience capture. Yeah. That's like the biggest bias for independent media. But still, all things considered, it, in the aggregate, it is way better. And that's why all the independent media people now are saying, oh shit, you were censored. <laughs> like now, now let's, let's actually have that conversation. Because again, this isn't even a difficult issue. It's not even like she came out in favor of like an actually taboo position or whatever. You yeah. know, this is like a duh position to the rest of the developed world. Well, she uh, went on counterpoints with Ryan and Emily, um, you know, the, our sister show over at mm -hmm. Breaking Points and um, explained her perspective and what happened and everything. I recommend everybody go watch that segment as well because she explains it better than, than I could. Um, oh, and we're going to have her. Experience. She's we're coming on, on Crystal, Crystal Kyle, Kyle and Friends, friends to talk well. about this as well. But, you so. know, one of the things she and Ryan were talking about is the fact that this is actually discussed much more openly in Israel <laughs> than it is here. Because in Israel, you've had a number of the um, recent prime minister. They they don't even they don't even pretend that they're for a two state solution anymore. Well, actually, the new guy the did, new guy did does. pretend that he doesn't mean it. He pretended, yes. but he did pretend. Yes, yeah. but others in the past, Netanyahu, they they don't even pretend that they're in favor of a two state solution. Here, we still have this fiction of oh, of course, the solution is two state solution. This is no longer on the table. I mean, this no, is no longer gone. feasible or possible. Single so. democratic state, but they're afraid that if they do that, then there is no more Israel proper. It's no longer a theocracy. And so they're like, no. So yeah. it's just roadblock for everything. All right, guys, we love you. That's the story on Katie. And uh, looking, looking forward to talking to her and getting more specifics on it. Absolutely.